If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We have this point marked right here and we've gone ahead and we've superimposed a y and an x-axis over that point in order to help us solve this problem. We also, for convenience, would like to label the charges. We can call this charge over here Q1 and then the other charge down here Q2. Next, what we want to do is draw the electric fields. There will be two electric fields, one produced by Q1 and one produced by Q2. It's important to remember that since both charges are positive, when we draw these electric fields at this point, we want to make sure that we point the electric field away from the positive charge. So, for example, at this point, looking at charge Q1, it is positive, so we're going to draw an electric field that points away from Q1 in this direction here. And we can label that electric field E1. Similarly, at the same point, looking at charge Q2, which is also positive, we're going to draw an electric field that points away from Q2. And we can label this electric field E2. After drawing in the electric fields, we want to consider the x and y components of those electric fields. Now, for E1, we would have an x component that's pointing along the positive x-axis. We might call that E1x. And then we have a y component pointing down the negative y-axis, which we could call E1y. And then similarly for E2, we have the x component pointing along the positive x-axis. We'll call that E2x. And then we have the y component pointing straight up, and we can call that E2y. Now there's something very important to notice regarding E2y and E1y. We can see that one points up and the other points down. Furthermore, notice that because the charges are equivalent and the distance from each charge to this point is the same, that would mean that the upward y component and the downward y component of the two electric fields are equal in magnitude, so they're actually going to cancel out. Now that wouldn't be true if the charges were different magnitudes or if the distance from each charge to this point was different. But in this case, both the charges and the distances are equal, and therefore the upward component of E2 and the downward component of E1 are also equal in magnitude and will therefore cancel out. So, we can actually simplify our diagram. We can remove the components E2, Y, as well as E1, Y, because again, they cancel. All that is left for the net electric field are the X components, both of which are pointing to the right. So our next goal is to find those X components and then add them together to get our final answer. Now, to find the x component of E1, which again we've labeled E1x, it's going to be useful to actually complete our triangle once again. We'll notice that we have an angle right here, which we can mark as theta1. And from this little right triangle, we can see that the cosine of angle 1 would equal the adjacent side, which is E1x, divided by the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which is E1. We can multiply both sides of this equation by E1. The E1s would cancel, and we can see that the x component of E1 is this expression right here. Now, we therefore need to come up with E1 and then the angle. The electric field produced by charge 1 is based on this expression down here. This is the electric field due to a point charge. So for E1, we would have the expression 1 over 4 pi epsilon multiplied by the charge Q1 divided by the distance squared. Now the distance will be from Q1 all the way to this point right here. So we're going to end up having to find that distance as well. So we'll just label this R1 for now. And then we have to multiply by the cosine of this theta 1. In 
this will end up giving us our x component for E1. Now to find the distance R1, we can go back and we can look at this triangle right here, which we've outlined in green. We know that each leg of the triangle is 5 centimeters and that this angle is a 90 degree angle. So essentially you have a triangle, a right triangle, whose legs are 5 and 5. Now from Pythagorean theorem or from our knowledge of 45, 45, 90 triangles, we know that the hypotenuse is equal to 5 radical 2. So that's going to give us the distance R1, 5 radical 2. Just take note that that's in centimeters. So actually, the distance R1 is going to be 5 radical 2. And then to convert it into meters, we multiply by 10 to the negative 2. So there's our value for R1. And then we know that theta1, which is a vertical angle to th this angle right here, must be 45 degrees because this angle here is 45 degrees and therefore theta1 is also 45 degrees. So we're going to be plugging in these values into our expression and that's going to give us the E1x, which is the x component of the electric field 1. So we've gone ahead and plugged in all the known values to compute E1x. Notice a couple of things. Notice that for epsilon we plugged in this value right here. For Q1, which was 3 nanocoulombs, we made sure to convert that into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the negative 9. We also made sure that we squared our distance. And then we have our calculator set to degree mode. And once you plug that in, you should get approximately 3,815 newtons per coulomb for E1x. So that gives us the x component of E1. By a similar chain of logic, we should notice that E2x is going to have the same magnitude as well as the same direction. We've drawn it already into our diagram. The charge Q2 is the same distance to this point. It also has the same magnitude of charge, positive 3 nanocoulombs. So by the same line of reasoning, we would see that E2x is also 3,815 newtons per coulomb. Remember, the y components already canceled out, so we don't have to worry about those. And therefore, the net electric field will be obtained simply by adding these two values together. And so when you do that, you're going to get about 7,630 newtons per coulomb. And then as far as the direction is concerned, both vectors were pointing in the positive x direction, and therefore the net electric field will point in the positive x direction, which we can symbolize by i hat. Now, of course, another way of expressing this answer is to say that the magnitude of the net electric field is 7,630 newtons per coulomb, and then the angle at which the electric field is acting would be 0 degrees relative to the positive x-axis. And again, that's because if you look back at our drawing, both electric fields, E1x and E2x, were pointing along the positive x-axis.